What's up? Welcome back. I hope y'all had a great week. I'm excited to be back here uh, with y'all on this podcast. I feel so good when I'm consistent. And I know this is only week two of the Wednesday podcast drop. We drop a podcast twice a week, once on Monday. It is the replay of the sermon that I preach on Saturday. And then on Wednesday, we have more of a traditional podcast. And I feel so good when I'm consistent. I know this is only week two of my consistency, but I'm hopeful, y'all. I'm really, I'm really hopeful about it. Not only am I hopeful, I'm committed. So I feel real good. I've been thinking about it all week. I pray that you guys have had a great week. Um, I hope y'all love that podcast, that episode from last week. If you did, be sure to let us know. If you haven't listened to it, you want to listen to it. Because it kind of gives the foundation of where these Wednesday episodes are going. And so I want you to know, like, what she always changes something up? You can go and listen to the Wednesday last week's episode to see kind of where we're going. Um, listen, one of the compliments that I get often is that I, like people want my confidence. They wish they were as confident as me or especially because I'm overweight. Right. People don't say that, but I know that's part of it. Like you're not even the. I don't want to say right size, but you ain't even the right size and you out here loving yourself. I'm like, girl, I have a mirror. So it doesn't matter what size I am. I'm looking in the mirror and what my eyes can see is cute. OK, so what you're talking about and how I love myself. It's one of the it's one of the compliments that I get a lot. Now, I will say this on the other side of that. People do kind of hate sometimes, too. Not people in my circle, not people I'm close to, but just people that you meet out in the world. People are like, you know, I'm full of myself or I think I'm all that. Well, I am. I do think I'm all that. I'm full of the Holy Spirit, first of all, but I am full of myself in the sense that I think I'm amazing. And I do think I'm all that because I'm all that. But I didn't live here. I didn't. I wasn't born with this. I'm not a woman who never struggled with low self-esteem. I definitely struggled with low self-esteem. And so I kind of want to share how you can let that go. Low self-esteem can be so heavy. You've got to let it go. When you are struggling with low self-esteem, you can feel it. It, it. it permeates through every area of your life. It touches your relationships. It has an impact on how you experience different events and things like that because you're always make let me not say how you are let me just share with you what i was like when i was struggling with low self-esteem and then i'm just going to share with you some of the things that i did to get to where i am in hopes that they will help you how about that let me not say what you do let me just tell you how it was for me because i don't know what it's like for you but for me i would go into a room when i went to events or especially like if they weren't family events when I would go to a, into a room and event, I would look around to see, like I would do like a survey of the room to see if I was the heaviest person in the room or not. And if I wasn't the heaviest person, then I would like breathe a little. Nine times out of 10, I was the heaviest person or I was on the very heavy end. And so that just made me feel a type of way like that already put me in a place where I was like, my confidence took a hit. I already wasn't confident when I left the house. Shopping was a nightmare. I couldn't find things that I liked or the things that I did like didn't fit properly or I couldn't wear the things that I wanted to wear because I felt like I didn't have the right body shape for it. So shopping was a nightmare. Going out was a nightmare. Even if my husband wanted to do something with me, we were going to have a barbecue. We were going to have a family thing. It always turned into something. I was having a meltdown because I felt like I didn't have anything to wear. And the reason I didn't have anything to wear, like I mentioned, because shopping was a nightmare and I was always buying stuff that was too small. I was always buying something that was too small with this idea that I was going to lose weight. Like, OK, I'm going to get this. It's too small, but I'm going to go on this hot dog diet, this grapefruit diet, this Atkins diet, this whatever diet. And I'm going to lose you know, all this weight in this short amount of time. Every time I thought about an event where I was going to go, um, thought about a holiday, a special occasion, I was thinking about what I was going to look like. And I already felt bad before I got there. But the truth is, it wasn't just about how I looked. If I'm being completely honest, I started to I started to feel bad about how I looked on the outside when I started to feel bad about my life in general. 
When I started to see my own self, my person, who I was as a human being, as less than, I wasn't where I wanted to be in life. I thought I was going to be someplace else. When I started to feel those things and think on those things, that's when I started to feel bad about how I looked. That's when my physical, um, that's when my physical appearance became like an issue. One, I was relatively small when I was like not the skinniest among everybody, but I was still small when I was coming up. And so I got pregnant young. When I got pregnant in high school, I was 125 pounds. And I was, I had hourglass figure, 125 pounds though. Big butt for 125 pounds, big boobs for 125 pounds and a small waist. And so when I got pregnant, I went from 125 to 175. I gained 50 pounds while I was pregnant. That's a lot of weight. And I gained that weight in nine months, short amount of time as a very young girl. You already are struggling with all kinds of things at that age. So here I go. Now I got stretch marks on my belly. I got stretch marks on my breasts. I got a kid, just all these things. And now my life and my time is not my own. And so that contributed to my struggle. You know, I I was in a whole nother size of clothing. My style had to change a bit because of the the extra weight that I was carrying. It just, it started that early, I think. I don't think I realized it at the time, but in retrospect, it started that early. I certainly wasn't where I thought I would be. Pregnant in high school, stretch marks. I got this kid. Then before I was, before I was, what, 20, had my son in what, um, in April of 2000. So I was 19. So I was pregnant again at at age 18. I was pregnant probably right after graduation, if not at graduation. And I never lost all the weight from that 175. So I put on another 20, 30 pounds. And we're talking over a four year time span. This is so much weight to put on. Now I'm now I got two kids. I didn't go off to college right away. I did eventually go, but I it just wasn't the life I expected to have post high school graduation. So then that was an issue. My relationship with my boyfriend at the time, who's my man, my man, my husband right now, um, we were crazy. It was not good. We said mean things to each other. I felt a certain type of way about my life, about the life we were living, like just all these things. And that continued to take a toll on my self-esteem. And that just kind of continued. And everything that I went through, everything I experienced, big, small, whatever, kind of stuck to me. It just kind of stuck. And I began to see myself as the situation I was in or my circumstance or all the things that I hadn't done. And so that continued to, you know, take a negative toll on my self-esteem, on how I saw myself. Things did not change. Things continue to get worse for lots of reasons. But when I think back to when did things start to look up, things didn't start to look up until after I was in my Bible all the time. And I was in my Bible, not about my self-esteem, but because my self-value, my self-worth was absolutely gone. I was ready to die. I was in full-blown depression I was ready to, everything was a mess. We were married by that time. We had three kids. We had dealt with infidelity. Like so many things were not where I thought they would be at whatever age I was. And so I started to get into my word, not to be a great Christian, not for any of that stuff, but because I was like, either the Lord is good and real or I'm going to die. Like those are my only options because I cannot and have no desire to live out the rest of my life under this cloud, right? And my self-esteem was a small part of that, but it was still a part of it. I don't want to live my life under this cloud. And so when I started to study my Bible for like to get to know God for wisdom, it wasn't just to get to know God. It was to see, it wasn't like, oh, I want to know the attributes of God. It's like, I'm trying to see if you, who you say you are, if they, if it's like they say it is, and I need to get in this word so I can get some wisdom. And if you can give me some wisdom and my life can change or whatever, then I might rock with you. You know, that kind of thing. That's why I was really in my word. And so that's when I can remember seeing a change in my self-esteem. Maybe people at the time didn't realize how bad I felt about myself. 
but it was clear once I got to full blown depression, but full blown depression does not happen overnight. It's just like all these little things that pile up and pile up and add up and without a way to handle those things or deal with those things, then it leads us to a place of, you know, where we're trying to fight off depression or fight off anxiety. So this was like over time, right? But I got from that space because of my time in the word. Because when I got in the word, I realized the truth that I am who God says I am. That's the first thing that I had to realize in order to let go of all the things that were holding me back. That I wasn't my situation. I wasn't my circumstance. I wasn't what I had been through. I wasn't the ugly things that my husband said to me about me when we were fighting. I wasn't the ugly things that people said about me. People wouldn't really say stuff to me outside of him that people said about me because I got pregnant earlier, because I had all these kids, I had three kids before I was, I was pregnant with three kids. I was pregnant with my third kid before I was even 21. And I had gained all this weight. I was on birth control pills and that kept me heavy and we were kind of poor. So I didn't really have money for stuff. I just looked at it. It was just, it was a mess. I learned when I got into this work that I'm none of those things. I don't care what my hair look like, what I look like, what kind of situation I'm living in. I don't care what this man is saying, what this woman is saying, what my situation. I don't care about none of that. I am only who God says I am. And if you want to overcome low self-esteem, if you want to drop low self-esteem right where it stands, you have to start with knowing who you are. Because while the thing that you might think about the most is how you look on the outside, it's truly an inside job. It starts there. It doesn't end there. And I think sometimes we pretend like it ends there, but it doesn't. It starts there. You have to start with knowing who you are. You want to get your self-esteem up. You want to get your confidence up. You have to know who you are. And you are only who God says you are. The opinions of other people don't of other people don't matter. What other people are saying about you, even those negative things that you think about yourself, those things aren't true. You are legit only who God says you are. And so that was the first thing I had to realize who I was. The second thing, if I was going to give you some advice, is to say, accept yourself, flaws and all. I had to accept myself exactly where I was. That, yes, I had three kids. I was probably pushing like 220 something pounds, which is what I'm pushing right now, in case you wonder. I was probably pushing like 220 something pounds. My weight had gone up and up, uh, up and down, up and down, up and down. But I had to accept myself, flaws and all, that I was only 5'4", that I was 200 plus pounds. We had these three kids. I didn't necessarily have the money that I wanted. I wasn't necessarily in the you know, space that I wanted to be with as far as work was concerned. And my marriage might not have been where I wanted to, it to be, but I had to accept myself for where I was, not to judge myself for what I had accepted from others, but to just accept I'm where I'm at. This is my weight. These are my finances. This is just what it is. Part of low self-esteem is like you, when you, when you have low self-esteem, you're always worried that somebody's going to reject you. You just assume people are going to reject you, but it's because you're rejecting yourself. How can people even begin to accept you if you don't accept yourself? And how can you acknowledge and recognize that people are accepting of you if, again, you don't accept yourself? You have to accept yourself exactly where you are, flaws and all. But you also have to be honest with yourself. Like, I accepted where I was, but if I'm honest and if when I got honest back then, I looked a mess because of choices I was making, Right? I looked a mess not because I gained weight. If you are, what, let, let's just, let me slow down. Whatever weight you're at, right? Let's just say that your weight is an issue. Let's just say. You can choose anything you want. My weight was an issue, so I'm going to use that. Because of my weight, right? Or not, let me not, not because of my weight. Because of my low self-esteem, because of my low self-esteem, I would use my own weight as a way to punish myself. So I didn't deserve to have clothes that looked good, that I felt good in because I was overweight. And until I lost weight, I didn't deserve to have those things. That is not okay. That's not healthy. 
That's not helpful. So once I accepted myself for where I was, then I could get honest and say, okay, 90% of my closet are things that I cannot fit. I'm not actually taking the time to take care of myself, um, my hair and my makeup and my, my appearance. Now I've accepted myself. I love myself, but I still am struggling with low self-esteem because while I accept that I am who God says I am, when I walk by the mirror, I don't love what I see. When I'm out with my friends, I'm running from the camera. I don't want people to take pictures of me when or I'm trying to like get in the back because I want half my body covered because you, so you can't really see. I'm wearing clothes that are not appropriate for the weather because I don't want my arms out or I don't want my thighs out or I don't want my shoulders out or whatever. So now I'm not wearing clothes that are appropriate for the season because I'm trying to hide things. And so now when I take a picture or somebody takes a picture of me, it feels like an attack, right? I'm just, I'm kind of running from these things. My hair ain't never done. I'm not doing anything, you know, special with my fate, like just not doing anything to take care of myself, to feel good. And I had to be honest, you don't have any clothes in your closet because you have been punishing yourself for being overweight. That's got to end. And once I accepted myself, it was easy to get honest. I love myself. I need to have clothes that I can wear like this is just where I am, even though I still am in a mindset where I would like to lose weight. That has not gone away. I still think about losing weight. I say I'm going to lose weight I'm on this diet, I'm changing my lifestyle. I'm going to work out. I still kind of live in that space, but I don't have low self-esteem around the desire to lose weight. It's like I might want to buy a house. I live in an apartment. I don't have I don't feel bad about my apartment, even though I want I keep saying I want to buy a house. I don't feel bad about living in an apartment. I don't feel bad about renting, even though I say I want to buy a home, even when I'm not doing the things that I may need to do so that I can purchase a home. I'm happy where I am in my weight. Right. I'm happy here. Two things can be true at the same time. You can be happy where you are and want to make changes. I don't know. I don't I know that's a hard thing to get, but this is the truth. I can be happy where I am and still want to make changes. And so I love myself where I am right now, but I kind of still want to lose weight. I say all of that to say, even though that's true, you can see the difference between where I am and where I was because of my self-esteem. I got honest. I look a mess because I choose to look a mess because I'm punishing myself. So I'm not keeping my hair done. It's why I'm not choosing to do the things that I really want to do. Right. I also had to stop comparing myself to other people. And here's the thing. I'm not just talking about comparing yourself on social media. Social media wasn't that wasn't a thing back then. So crazy. I'm really dating myself now. Social media wasn't really a thing back then. So I wasn't necessarily comparing myself to people who might have photoshopped or whatever. I was comparing myself to people I saw every day. But you've got to stop comparing yourself. It's okay to look at people and learn from them, get tips from them, get insights and strategy from them. But stop comparing yourself to them because the truth is they did not wake up like that. I know Beyonce, I woke up like this. She didn't. She didn't. And if she was able to wake up like that, it's because she's got awesome skincare. It's because she's got a hairstylist that did her hair the night before and put it in a protective style. So when she woke up, she woke up like that. It is not because she is just inherently this way. No. Everybody that you can think of that you believe is absolutely gorgeous, whether they are celebrities or somebody that you know, they are putting in some work to be that. So stop comparing yourself because what you're doing is you're comparing, you're comparing where you are to where they are and completely ignoring all of the work they put in to get there. When I stop comparing myself and I just start like being an observer I'm looking, I'm like a researcher. Okay. <laughs> once I started, once I knew who I was, I'm a child of the most high God. I am fearfully, wonderfully made. I look like Jesus. Once I really got that and I accepted where I was, 
then I started looking at other people, at other women, not to compare myself to them, but so that I can see what they were doing. Like, okay, I see her. She looks so cute. Why? One of the first things I noticed about women who I thought looked so good or who I thought looked so much better than me, their eyebrows were done. They had, that's just what I noticed. I noticed their eyebrows were arched. I was like, that's what I need to do. I need to keep my eyebrows arched. Completely changed my face. (laughs) Having my eyebrows arched and I did, I wasn't penciling in and stuff like that, but just getting them arched completely changed my face. And I immediately loved my own face even more. I had more excitement about my own face in the mirror when I got my eyebrows arched. And I continue to look at women. I continue to admire them from like a, um, you know, really an investigative point of view. Like I'm investigating. Let me get my pen, my paper. What are they doing? Oh, her hair is done. Hmm. Tried styles that didn't necessarily work for me and things like that. But it gave me something to work with, but I couldn't see the difference. I couldn't see the work that they were putting in until I stopped comparing myself to them. When I just started observing, looking at them, taking notes, I'm not going to wear heels. So I got to stop looking at these women with heels because I'm ne- I'm not going to achieve that look. That look that I admire, I'm not going to achieve that because I'm not wearing heels. So let me look at these other women who are not wearing heels. How is it that they look so cute? Oh, okay. I see it's, you know, the way they put their outfit together. Oh, okay. It's the hair. Oh, okay. They got on makeup. No, I couldn't do makeup. Well, um, I'm, I'm just doing okay right now. Actually, I'm not, you know, top level, but I do okay for me. I do what I do, what I need to be able to do. Um, and so when I stop comparing myself and start like being, checking people out so I can get on game, letting these folks put me on game. It changed the clothes that I bought. It changed my hair, the way I took care of my hair. I started to actually invest my time, my effort and my money into how I looked. And I'm not talking about looking good on the outside and feeling like crap on the inside. I want you to hear I felt good on the inside. And once I started feeling good in the inside and I was walking by mirrors and what I look like on the outside didn't match what I felt like on the inside, I started to take notes from women I saw out in the street to say, oh, she looked cute. She looked cute. Not to compare, but to learn. Let me see what she does right there. That look good. She look good. Where she got on? Where she got that from? Hey, that's such a nice one. Where you got that from? Especially if she was kind of my size. Oh, girl, where you got that from? And women are so great. This is what I have found. Women are so amazing. Friend, when you give a woman a compliment, she want to tell you where she got it from and that she only paid $5 for it. <laughs> okay. Oh, you love this? <laughs> I had therapy. And um, I had on a cardigan or whatever in my cardigan. This is so cute, okay? It's like this leopard color cardigan. And my therapist was like, oh, I think I have one just like that. I was like, oh, it feels so good. Did you get it from Target? She was like, no, she got it from someplace else. But if somebody's giving in a compliment to these to women, when we're complimenting each other, somebody give me a compliment, girl, I'm about to tell you where I got this whole outfit from. Because it's no competition. Because I know who I am because I've accepted myself. So I'm already in a good place on the inside. And if you're complimenting me on how I look, then clearly I've done my job. I look super cute. And I want you to feel and look good too. Because when I know who I am, I know I'm not in competition with you. So I don't need to be comparing myself to you. So when you get to a place where you can stop comparing, you can start checking these women out, finding out where they shop and what they doing. And then you have to make the decision to actually do the work. I never used to wash my face. I tell this story. I don't care. Judge me. Judge yourself. I never used to wash my face. I didn't have like a good skincare regimen. I was just blessed to not have a lot of problems with my skin, especially once I left Florida. In Florida, I had bad skin. Oily, had lots of pimples, lots of breakouts and things when I lived in Florida. Um, When I moved to North Carolina, the temperature change 
you know, the, the climate is different up here. The weather's different. And so I didn't have a lot of breakouts. I didn't wash my face a lot as a result. Anyway, not like a skincare whole thing. People are doing, I took a bath. That's pretty much it. Outside of that, I wasn't doing anything special with my face. And, and so I would go out with my friends, Amber and Olivia, and they would put this beat face. They would just look so good all the time. And I just used to feel like I look so homely. I'm cute. But when I stand next to y'all and I get in this picture and I'm grinning, I don't look as cute as y'all to myself. I don't care what other people think. I don't look as cute as y'all to myself. How they look so cute? Because they ain't cuter than me. I love Amber. Shout out to Amber Likens. Shout out to Olivia Hayward. You can check out their uh, YouTube channels. They cute, but they ain't cuter than me. So how they look cuter than me, you know, like. How do they look cute? Like how they had makeup, great skincare. I'm like, oh. only we was styling. Okay, you know what? Started using that Mary Kay. Started washing my face with this. I got this whole little system, honey. Morning and evening. Started watching uh, Amber's YouTube videos because they didn't want to do my makeup. Heifers. Started watching her YouTube videos and so now I know how to put my own makeup on. This right here is good for me. I it's my I don't have no eyeshadow. You know what I'm saying? My eyeshadow. I can't do all this stuff. I ain't got no wings. I, I don't know how to put on lashes. Okay, but this right here is good for me, and I feel so good when I walk past the mirror. If there's any time, any place somebody wants to take a picture with me, I feel really good that way. Let me just make sure I say this. Even when I don't have on makeup these days, I still feel really good about myself. I have, I have a skincare regimen, so my skin looks really nice. I take really good care of it. My skin looks healthy. Do you know what I'm saying? This is what I'm saying to you. But I had to learn to accept I still haven't lost any weight. Child, I wear shorts now. I wear short sleeve stuff now. I wear sleeveless stuff now. I will take pictures with my fat old arms and I don't care. I'm going to have my thighs out in the summer and I don't care. Child, cellulite and all. <laughs> Rolls and all. Surely do. Why? Because I know who I am and my cellulite, my rolls, my breakouts, my whatever does not define who I am. There's not a situation that I'm going through that defines who I am. I'm amazing in and out of season, okay? I'm amazing when I'm on. I'm amazing when I fall off. I'm amazing at the top of the mountain. I'm amazing in the valley. You have got to start saying those things about yourself. You've got to start recognizing those things about yourself and Accept yourself for exactly who you are, flaws and all, for exactly where you are, flaws and all. And get honest. Be real honest. I'm. This is my situation because I'm not interested in doing such and such. I'm this weight. If I have to give up full fat cheese and ice cream, I'm probably not going to. It's probably. It's probably not going to happen. I need to be honest with myself. Honest, this is not a season where I'm going to be doing, I need to be honest with myself. I have full control over how I look. So if I want to look a certain way, I'm looking at these people. Instead of comparing yourself to people, take some notes and switch up the game. Last but certainly not least, your self-esteem will get a boost when you surround yourself with things and people you love. Looking at beautiful things, honestly, makes me feel good about myself because the same God that created that thing or the same God that gave the skill and the gifting to the artist or to the person who created something or designed something, it is the same God who made me. So when I see beautiful things, I just, I don't know. I, it makes me feel good because God created us both. God created the rose and he created courage. He created these things that I'm, that I feel when I see a mountain, I'm like, oh, takes my breath away. When I see the beach, it just takes your breath away. You know, when you see these amazing things and it takes your breath, it's the same God. That's why you have to start with knowing who you are, that you are who God says you are, that you have to start it from a place where you're remembering that you were created by the same God that created all of those things. And just like those things are beautiful, so are you. 
just like nature is breathtaking, mountain peaks, snow-capped mountain peaks and rivers and beaches are beautiful. Just like the sunset is beautiful, it's remarkable and breathtaking, so are you. And when you know who you are and you get to a place where you're honest with yourself and you're not killing your self-esteem by constantly comparing yourself to other people, you can start to really enjoy the beauty around you and the things and the beauty of the people who love you. Surrounding yourself with people who are geeked out about you, people who think you are all that, people who absolutely love you, who celebrate you, surrounding yourself with those people, spending more time with the people who are, whose faces light up when they see you, they're excited to spend time with you. That will boost your self-esteem. That will constantly remind you. But I want you to not notice the order in which I'm encouraging you. The order in which it had to take place. It can't start from the outside. It's not enough for you to spend time with people who absolutely love you, who want to celebrate you. It's just you can't start there. It's an inside job. It's an inside job. And it starts with a God on the inside of you listening and allowing the spirit of God to remind you of who created you. It has got to start there first. It's got to start with your true identity. And once you get that revealed, I feel like it's all downhill from there. Once I knew who I was, I had a, I had a chance. I actually had a chance to be better once. When you don't know who you are, man, you ain't got no chance of building your self-esteem. You ain't got a chance. Snowball's chance in hell. You got no chance. It has to start with who you are. Everything rises and falls to the level of the identity that you accept. And when you accept the fact that you are remarkable, you are a marvelous creation, there isn't anything that you can't overcome or do. Nothing. Listen, I pray that this episode has completely blessed you. I want you to take some time to see like, where are you? So maybe you've accepted who you are. Maybe you know who you are and you've accepted it. But have you gotten honest? Have you accepted it from this place of like, well, I just got to accept this is who I am. No, that's not good. Can you get honest? These are the steps I can take to really get excited about myself. These are the steps I can take to really get excited that are going to make me feel good about me internal things, not trying to prove anything, not to become something. You are already marvelous, right? I want you to take some time and, and check and see where are you on this list? Do you need to start at step number one, knowing who you are? Step number two, accepting yourself. Step number three, being honest with yourself. Step number four, do you need to stop comparing and you need to start taking notes? Step number five, surrounding yourself with beautiful things and beautiful people who love, inspire you and are, celebrate you. Where, where are you? Because low self-esteem is so heavy and it's sometimes so difficult to let go and drop these are the steps that helped me to get to where I am, to get to a place where I love the woman that I am, fully dressed, beat face, and also without a stitch of clothes on. Love myself, dimples, curves, rolls, and all. Stretch marks. Girl, I do not care. I just be smiling. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> I remember when. I remember when catching myself, catching a glimpse of myself, not all tied up and all those things would have been my undoing. I remember a time where I needed to wear Spanx in order to feel good about what I look like in the mirror. I ain't mad at Spanx. I'm not mad at shapewear. Get it, use it. Just like I'm not mad at makeup. Get whatever you want. But I look good with or without it. Just so we clear. I love myself with or without it. I've kind of decided how I want to look. You have to decide how you want to be, how you want to look when you walk, when you catch your reflection. What do you want looking back at you? There was something looking back at me that I didn't want. And so I had to make some changes. And I pray again, I'm closing. I'm getting out here for real. I pray that this helps somebody. 
If this helps somebody, I will feel like I have done my job. Send me an email, courage at couragemolina.com, if this helps you. All you got to say is, girl, I watched your podcast. It helped me. If it helps one person, then I feel like I have done my work. I don't know what level you're on, one, two, three, four, five, what step you need to take to get to the next level, but I encourage you to get um, serious, take some time to journal about this and make a decision to take that next step towards dropping low self-esteem forever and standing flat-footed, 10 toes down for the awesome woman that you are. That's what I want you to do this week. All right. I love you. Hope you come back again next week. Remember, we drop two episodes a week, one on Monday. It's the recap of the sermon. and It's a replay of the sermon. It's not a recap. It's a replay of the sermon on Monday and Wednesdays. We have a traditional podcast episode. I love y'all. And thanks for the love. Y'all have been sharing this podcast and tagging me. Continue to do that. Absolutely love it. If you love this podcast, be sure to give us a five-star rating, to like it, to write a review, all those things. Do all the things so that all the algorithms know that this is love and this is great content to help us reach women all over the world. All right. Love it all. Bye.